The rise of professional rugby in the nation's capital is here, but the road to glory has only just begun. This is the Road to Glory podcast, home for all old glory DC faithful, talking all things rugby in the DC region and beyond. Now your host, Ryan Yee, Gavin Hickey, Trinidad Bavio, Roland Pratt, and Farah Douglas. Welcome to the Road to Glory podcast, the official podcast for your old glory DC, talking all things rugby in the capital region and beyond. I'm Ryan Yee, and of course, with me every single week, Roland Pratt, Farrah Douglas, Gavin Hickey, and Trinidad Bavio. Got a lot to get to in this show. Obviously, we're going to break down what was a pretty shocking matchup against the former MLR champions, uh, the New York Ironworkers. Uh, we got a huge, huge interview. We got to talk to one of old glory DC's newest members, Ramiro Herrera, who's bringing a whole bunch of of experience to this squad and the impact that he's going to have on this old glory dc franchise and of course we will preview uh the big bounce back matchup that we hope at least uh coming up this weekend against the new england free jacks but before we get there um it is something that we talked about towards the tail end of last episode uh Gavin Hickey wasn't so much busy watching Six Nations rugby or getting into that. He was busy taking care of business, apparently against my alma mater, uh, Navy taking on Western Ontario from Canada. And uh, yeah, to say the least, it was uh, it was some sort of showing there. Uh, absolutely goose egging uh, the Western Ontario Mustangs and, and putting on a pretty, pretty good experience and uh, definitely putting uh, putting me in my place, Gavin. <laughs> ah, no, well, I'll tell you what, we were delighted that uh, Western took us up and the opportunity to come down. Uh, we had a very generous classmate, um, USNA Naval Academy uh, alumni, Sean Francis, classmate too, who helped out on, on, on helping this one happen after Queens pulled out. So we were just delighted to get the game. And um, despite the scoreline, they were a tough physical side. Um, so we're very grateful for the, uh, hopefully the, the tune up ahead of the big game against Cal this weekend. Yeah, tune up is one way to put it. But I will say, <laughs> we're still it's still a debate though between you and I, Gav. That uh, that's going to count towards my prediction segment. Uh, we're going to get to that later in the show. A pretty shocking result there, um, and we'll definitely uh, see how all the standings have shaken up. Our one of our newest hosts here, Trinidad Bavio, making a statement uh, with some pretty uh, bold uh, predictions there last week. We'll see whether or not she can keep that going. But again, got lots to break down in this episode. If you aren't already though, make sure you're following at Old Glory DC on social media. That's where you'll get all your Old Glory DC content. And we do appreciate you guys liking, subscribing, following us here on the Road to Glory podcast, giving your uh, weekly dose of Old Glory DC content every single match week. It's been super fun stuff so far as we start heading into round four. Um, Let's start getting into it, uh, uh, all you guys. Let's start talking about what happened in round three. I know we got a, a tough Old Glory DC matchup to get to, but before we get to that, Kind of overall thoughts of round three. I know the big thing was that you guys were feeling after two rounds that the the champion or that I should say the contenders were pretty separating themselves from the pretenders. Is that something that you're still sticking with? Um, obviously, big performance by Seattle, Houston, Chicago is kind of surprising here. Now lost, losing two straight after what was such a hyped up uh, off season for them. Um, what are you guys thinking after round three? I just think I that. Think- Sorry, Fire. Go ahead. Oh no, you go. I just think that the hype around Chicago initially was unwarranted. I think they were put up on a, you know, they're going to be a a quasi Austin LA team uh, coached by Sam Harris. Sam Harris is a very good coach, but I just don't think that they are the team that people expected them to be. And they're certainly not that team yet because it's going to take quite a while to, to gel. So that was a big takeaway from that one. For the big surprise for me, I have to say though, was was um, Houston beating San Diego. That one really caught me off guard. But I do think there's still a fairly significant separation, and and even more so now after three games of the kind of haves and the have-nots, and that's going to be an interesting battle all the way through the season. Yeah, absolutely. Any other uh, thoughts heading in the weekend fair? I know you had something to say. Not anymore. <laughs> Slug rowers, we're like in sync. Gavin pretty much articulated what I was thinking. I think with Chicago, Chicago in particular, they like they just need more time. They are still figuring out each other on the field, and you can see that in all the like really small misconnects and um, execution errors are ha- that are happening. But they one hundred percent have improved since that first match. I just don't think that they're they've met the hype yet. Sure, sure. That's Absolutely. well said. A long yeah. season. 
Now, does your does your I, I know all of us, and it, it it showed in our in our prediction segment where we all were hung ho over uh, over San Diego. Are your temp are your expectations tempered a little bit with San Diego after that tough uh, defeat against Houston, or is it still going forward? Houston's now proven that more so. Houston has proven themselves as a team, one of the teams to beat here in the MLR. I, I don't think anything is proven. Sorry, Farah. Yeah. I, I said I don't think anything is proven because okay. it's just so early. I think that San Diego went over to Houston there, played a heck of a game, and just came out right. I, I mean, they knocked the ball on. I think on their on the Houston five meter line to end the game, they could have been easily been the victors as well. So when it's, it was a one score game, um, and uh, they went down to Houston and played that game. I, I give Houston credit though. I they're they're better than I thought they were, um, and um, I think they've made some very astute moves there over the off season. And again, coaching uh, quality speaks for itself there. You know, uh, with the Messers, uh, Human and uh, Meyer. But um, I, I think, though, that it's the haves and the have-nots again. I think we're seeing Chicago and Dallas in the other conference and Toronto and NOLA in this conference are struggling a little bit out of the gates, guys. But um, I think, though, if we, we consider Atlanta and ourselves might be in that middle ground uh, is where I'm seeing it with New York and probably New England um, shading us in just in the early stages of our development. I think that there's plenty for, for all Every single team, there's growth for all of them, but I think some teams have a bit more growth than others, and I would definitely put Old Glory in that uh, grouping for sure. Absolutely, and and we're gonna break down again that matchup against New York in, in just a moment's time here. But lastly, I'll, I'll throw it to Trini here. Now that you start to dive a little bit here into the MLR and starting to watch these games and and uh, kind of figure out the atmosphere that has has been growing here with the MLR and the match that you've seen. Um, any any key things that you've noticed after you know with all the thing, all the rugby that you're watching on a weekend and in, in, in particular with the MLR. Um, first of all, I'm pretty excited to hear also this from Ramiro Herrera that we'll be talking with him in a little bit. Um, I noticed that um, they you 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 play like in a high speed, but sometimes it's not because it's already like you know what you are going to do. You know what I mean? It's like you always want to to play that line out fast, um, or, or maybe sometimes I think it's better like to pull it down. But I've seen very good things. Um, I, I think that you can get even better in the kicking game in, in, in all of the teams. I'm pretty excited by the scrum in Old Glory. Ramiro Herrera was amazing. And I think it's going to be a, a great weapon all along this tournament. You know, just to just to add to that point, I do think there's a great point there, Trina. I think the, the standard overall has been good. The the first half of the Chicago Utah game was outstanding. Mm -hmm. I do think that there's been a market improvement in the overall quality of play. And whether that's the refereeing decisions of having limited scrums, uh, you know, or just an emphasis on ball and play time, whatever it might be, I do think the quality or certainly the excitement has been there from the get-go that it hasn't necessarily been there from the very start each season so far. So that's been really enjoyable to watch. All right, well, let's let's get right into it. Uh, let's start talking about this Old Glory DC matchup here with the New York Ironworkers over the weekend. Obviously, mm -hmm. a tough result here. Old Glory DC falling to the former MLR champions, 34-8. Uh, a little bit of a, a closer start to the match. It was, and then in the second half, kind of broke way free a little bit here. Um, but I guess, you know, I'll just, I'll just throw it out to you guys. I know we were we were pretty high on Old Glory DC, obviously, after that first opening matchup. They had the, the tough buy in that second round and then obviously come out here against the former MLR team, not an easy task. Uh, but is this something that, uh, that, that concerns you now after a result like that? I'll go first. Um, so I don't know if I would say that it concerns me and my palms are sweating. I think it concerns me that if certain things aren't addressed, that they'll continue to, st to stifle our ability to put points on the board. So you look at the stats, the end of the first half, we had, I think, 71% of territory and only 44% possession. So to me, that's saying that, okay, maybe we're good at continuity, but not so good at go forward and scoring because you have to keep the ball in your hands. 
And we did have a lot of handling errors that turned that turned the ball, the possession of the ball over. Um, and then I think one of the other things that I've been thinking about, it'd be interesting to hear um, what Gavin thinks as a, as a front row player, because we often think about power and strength and how's that, how that translates. So I think, oh, glorious fit, their cardio fit, but where we seem to be getting caught a little bit is at the contact area, like keeping um, solid possession of the ball in contact. Um, we struggled a little bit defending that line out drive, um, took a little bit for us to settle in the scrum. So is there an issue around cardio fitness versus fitness and power and strength? Yeah, far. I think that's a really interesting one, but you know, I'd build on that as well. And I would say that obviously, you know, Herrera's just, just got here. I would think that there's, we didn't get the rewards we wanted at scrum time. That's going to be a problem. You know, if we're building a, a pack that's going to dominate scrums, but we're not getting the, the rub of the referee, that's going to be a major issue. I think we saw a little bit of, this, uh, uh, of that this weekend. But to answer your point as well there, Ryan, should we be concerned? The answer is, yeah, we should. Like, these are games we need to win. You know, this is, and I'll defend Old Glory by saying it is a, new look squad i think we we as old glory fans look at it and say okay well there's lots of familiar faces eh, there's a few but it's it's a very very new squad with a lot of influence from international players that take time to build and i think that's going to be the key thing going forward but you know should we be concerned yes we should because these are games that this team should be aiming to win and speaking to a couple of people in camp, you know, they were very happy with the week's pro progress. They were very happy with, with all the travel plans, with the way they approached the game. They knew everything New York were going to do. And yet we still lost 34-8, I think it was, right? So should we be concerned? Yeah, we should. We've got to, we've got to get it right this week. And Roly, I know there were, some, there were some numbers that you saw that were kind of glaring to you in terms of the, the performance over the weekend. Yeah, I, it was a little bit, um, it was a little bit disturbing because um, – I thought we were going to be a little bit better at the breakdown and we conceded 11 penalties there versus four from New York. Um, that disappointed me. I thought we could have um, uh, done a little bit better there. But 14 handling errors, Ryan, is just a, it's just too much. I know it was a windy day. I know the conditions weren't right, but um, New York didn't, didn't have as many, you know what I mean? Uh, so it's the same for every team. And I think that we just gave away the ball at very important times uh, we had gone through several phases and we gave up a knock on or a give away a silly breakdown penalty and we lost that momentum on so many occasions when we had just crossed into the into the danger areas and uh, that's terribly frustrating that's not going to happen every week for sure but I'll give another example of things that um, like Tito um, I think it obviously had had himself another great try but he he missed several tackles on the day. I don't think that'll be like him. And I, and I don't think that'll uh, happen during the season going forward. But it was just another thing that happened on the day. I believe he missed three or four tackles. Uh, Jamison and Anna Schultz put in a huge game, like running meters and going to breakdowns. But he had eight turnovers. It's just unacceptable, you know? I mean, four were penalties and I think three or four were knock-ons. It's just too many on a, on a given day. He spoiled all that good work that he he had done by just having those turnovers. It's very frustrating, and I'm sure he'll be the most frustrated. But anyway, those are just a few things that I saw. I think a lot of these can be cleaned up. I wouldn't be quite as down as Gavin would be. I think that we're going to see a bit of a better bounce back uh, this coming week against New England. Uh, but I do think we just have a little work in to do here. And, um, you know, we'll write this ship pretty quickly. And, and it's it's pretty interesting. Yeah, Trini, what, do you have something? No. In this particular game, those, the, the discipline mistakes or, or that, that 11 or 14 penalties that Roland just mentioned. Um, another thing that I was wondering and wanted to talk to you guys is the defensive mall because New York was better at the mall than, than Old Glory and always was looking for, to, to get closer to the end goal so that they had, a line out and go, go and do the, the, the small that was pretty effective for them. So if you do that mistake, then you are giving the other team the opportunity to go and score once again. And a lot of missed opportunities, uh, handling errors that 
you know, when you don't have a certain like a playmate that you can give the ball, then you can just settle in. Like let's, how I don't know how to say, but let, let's go step by step so that we can get to angle to their like in the right way, you know. But uh, the mall is also something that uh, that caught my attention. Roly, you mentioned there that you know giving the wall, ball away city times, as did everybody, as did you, Trini, as well. But I mean that that's the concern. That's why we should be concerned. That's either earmark of a team that's still getting used to each other, which I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. That's what it is. Or, I mean, that's the death knell of any team, that if you can't convert your opportunities, that just leads to frustration, which leads to more frustration, which leads to loss after loss. We've, we've been here before. So I think you're dead right with that. The handling errors were, were unacceptable, but we, we've got to get that right or it's a bit of deja vu. Oh, absolutely. Especially when we were down 5 nothing, 10 nothing, 13 nothing in the first 20 minutes or so there. I was like, oh my God, that is deja vu to last year. But we did right the ship and we were in the game then for the next 40 minutes or so. We lost on the board, but the, you know, the, the, again, it's the, New York have been for three years, have had it. Absolutely unbelievable mall with Fawcett uh, at the helm there. So we're we're a little bit behind in our development in that. On a on a nicer day, that could have been us with Tito kicking the ball into the corners, uh, but it wasn't to be on Saturday. Hopefully, or, or excuse me, on Sunday. But hopefully, this weekend coming, um, it'll be a different story, and we'll be able to get onto our game plan. I feel like we played New York's game plan a little bit uh, too much uh, on the weekend. So yeah, maybe we can get back to that. I, I, I completely agree with you. The one thing to keep in mind this week, though, is it's a sick day turnaround for us with the day's less recovery than, um, than New England yes. have had, obviously. Yes. Yeah, and no, and no less of a formidable opponent either, right? We talked Absolutely. about that. We talked about this stretch at the start of the season, how this stretch of going from, you know, you had that bye week, obviously opened up with Chicago, had a good performance there, bye week, and then taking on New York, and then now taking on New England. It's definitely something where you could, I guess you could take it two ways, right? Obviously, it's a tough matchup, mm -hmm. but it's a good way to obviously prove yourself that maybe, maybe this New York match was just a one-off, and this is something that we can turn around, make those improvements that you guys are talking about, and prove that against a side that's obviously proven that they are pretty good. Well, you could argue that the two biggest games of the season are def most difficult away to your two conference sure. main men. Um, so I think anything else after that will 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 be re more relaxed going into New York and New England up there in early March. Not great, yeah. is it? Yeah, not, a, not <laughs> no. an easy one. So yeah, we're, de we're definitely going to break that one down in just a few moments time here. But before that, uh, we are going to have an interview here with Ramiro Herrera, one of the newest members of Old Glory DC, going to provide us a little bit of insight into his experiences starting off with the franchise and also uh, dig in a little bit deeper also into his uh, Argentinian rugby journey and his rugby journey across the world because he has a whole bunch of experience that he's going to provide to this team, which would be fun to talk to him about. So that's coming up right after a short break. But first, Mighty Meals is the official meal prep partner of Old Glory DC. The chef prepared healthy meals can be delivered fresh to you four times a week. Order your next meal now at MightyMeals.com. The Roads of Glory podcast will be right back. Experience how sous vide is reimagined the way we eat from the company trusted by the most renowned chefs in the world. Visit CuisineSolutions.com or your local retailer to get a taste. It takes leadership. It takes determination. It takes grit. On the pitch and off. At ECS, we're tackling our nation's biggest challenges. From cybersecurity and artificial intelligence to digital transformation and IT operations, we build powerful solutions for a complex world. Meet the challenge. Make a difference. Are you looking for an exciting and unforgettable live sporting event? Look no further than Old Glory DC, your hometown Major League Rugby franchise. Don't miss out on this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see professional rugby up close. With a mix of strength, skill, and strategy, rugby is a sport like no other. Whether you're coming alone, with friends, or looking for unique family entertainment, Old Glory DC has something for everyone. Be a part of this unique experience. Get your tickets now at OldGloryDC.com. That's OldGloryDC.com. Knowledge, it's where innovation begins. 
It's what leads us to discovery and motivates us to succeed. It's why we ask the tough questions and what leads us to the answers. At Lidos, we're standing behind those working to improve the world's health, safety, and efficiency. Lidos. Pro Rugby in the nation's capital is here. Are you on board the road to glory? Back to upping the flags with your hosts, Ryan Yee, Gavin Hickey, Trinidad Bavio, Roland Pratt, and Farrah Douglas. Welcome back into the Road to Glory podcast. Trinidad Bavio, Gavin Hickey, Roland Pratt, Farrah Douglas, I am Ryan Yee. And uh, we're super excited for this upcoming interview that we have. It is the Rent Dittmar Bring It Home interview. And this week, we're so pleased to be joined with one of the newest members of the Old Glory DC, Ramiro Herrera, front rower, uh, making an appearance over the past weekend, his first in the Old Glory DC colors. Ramiro, how's it going, man? Hi, how are you guys? Really, really excited, really happy to be here. Awesome. Great to hear. Well, let's get it uh, started easily with an easy question here, get you kind of warmed up here. Um, obviously, you've had uh, a little bit of time here to get adjusted to Washington, D.C., get adjusted to being with the Old Glory D.C. So how has your experience been like practicing, training with Old Glory D.C. and now having your uh, first match under your belt? Yeah, uh, for me, was I, I was really excited to, to come here because uh, many RJs are here and they tell me about they are really professional, big structure to, to training here. That for me is really important. And um, the group is amazing, really professional as well. So, uh, yeah, I was really excited to play the first game, to sharing the, the field with the guys. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't have a great game, but that's uh, it's like the experience. Uh, the things positive is that we have time to fix it. Good man, Romero. Welcome to the United States. I hope you're settling in well. Um, Thank you. Let me ask you about um, your experiences so far with, with Old Glory in terms of how do they compare with rugby in Argentina? How would you, what are the differences between you know, professional rugby here uh, in the States and, and um, what's happening down in Argentina? I think uh, it's a big difference because in Argentina, we have a big culture of rugby, you know, like uh, when you are a child, you start to play rugby because you love to play rugby. And uh, the culture, I think the, the coaches are really good when you are young, but there's a big, big formation to be better, to improve every day. That's the, the first thing in Argentina, culture and mindset, I think. And um, I think the last... 10, 10 or 15 years, Argentina is working very, very hard in uh, skills, in uh, uh, conditionings. Um, and that you can, because Argentina is playing with the, against the best, best, best teams in the world. And it's really hard sometimes because we don't have the best competition uh, in our country. But um, when I arrived here, I watched that you have everything to improve here in the sport. You know what I mean? Like the structure is amazing, the gym, uh, the field synthetic, uh, recovery, everything is good, you know? And you have the guys, you have the athletes, you have the genetic if you want as well. So I think uh, looks like a diamond, you know, United <laughs> States, you have a big, big potential to be better every day. So. I'm really, really excited to be here. I promise you a fair experience to play here, and I that's a really good surprise for me. Good man, good man. Let me let me ask you follow on from that is is a couple of things you touched on there. But how would you um from an Argentinian point of view, how would you characterize how the United States plays rugby? What, sorry, what Argentina? Is from an Argentinian point of view, how do you when you look at American rugby, not MLR but the USA and MLR, I suppose, is there a couple of characteristics that are purely belong to the United States that you'd know from your short experience here in MLR. This is how America plays. This is how American teams play. This is how we can compete with them or this is how we can contribute to them. Yeah, you know, for us, we don't, we don't play a lot against the United States. For us, the, I, I think I played one time like 10 years ago <laughs> against the United States. 
Um, for us, the imagine is like uh, the image is like big athletes, really tough in the contact, but um, sometimes they play like automatically, you know, mm. like uh, setups direct. Uh, I think we are more Latins, Latinos. Uh, sometimes we play. It depends. We are we were watching front of us, you know. So uh, I think is if the RGs they have the the mindset or the the mentality to respect the structure like you, we can improve as well. And you, if you have that uh, that play, it depends what you have front of you. You're gonna improve as well. So I think it's just um, maybe a culture, maybe I don't know. Something like that, but for us, uh, United States, uh, big conditioning, big athletes, and uh, really tough in the contact. But we know that if we play with our weapons, we can get a good game. Good man, good man. And then with all those ingredients, with lots of Argentinians, with American homegrown players, and and many other foreigners. Um, are you seeing any patterns? I know you've only been here for a short time, but are you seeing any patterns across Major League Rugby that you're identifying that teams are doing? Uh, or is that just rugby as a whole uh, around the world at the moment? Sure. Yeah, yeah. sorry. What's the question? So, because uh, are, are you seeing, with, with the Argentinian influence, with the homegrown American players, is there certain characteristics that are coming out of Major League Rugby? Are you seeing any trends, any patterns? Yeah, sure. Because... For me, it's really important that the foreigners coming here to United States. For for me, one of the most important things in rugby is culture and team building. You know, team building the feedback between the players. That's the difference because the rugby is is not like individual sport. It's a team sport, hundred percent. I'm sure about that. And I think in, here in USA, you can you can improve in that because uh, you have everything to improve, but the culture, team building, relationship within the players and the, how, I don't know how you say, but um, friendly, you know, make like a friendly, friendly relation with the players. For me, for me on the field, you have a little bit more. That's for me, that's good. I think that's good. Um. Welcome. It's very exciting to see you put the Ogori jersey on. Um, I'm going to ask a little bit more specific question to your position. Um, what do you bring in terms of the scrum to Ogori? Well, uh, to be honest, for the Argis, because uh, they tell me about the, 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 the team, the, the objective, of the of this club, um, I know as well the GM, this Marcelo, uh, and I know how is how is working, and I'm agree with that, with that. So um, that's the reason because I say, why not? Uh, it's a good challenge for me. I've been a lot of time playing uh, in Europe, in France, uh, in Super Rugby as well, international as well, and I think. Uh, United States uh, is going to be really good in the next years. Uh, it's improving every every year. Um, that's the reason because I'm here. Awesome. Hello, Kupa. Um, you, um, oh, yeah. oh, sorry. Do you do you feel like with the resume that you have, with your international and professional experience, do you feel like with Ogore's set piece, particularly the scrum, that you stand into a bit of um, a technical coach role as well as a player? Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, I think in, in France or whatever in the world, always you have like player and coaches as well because I've been with uh, big players, big experience in a big teams and they have the role as well, like the coach, you know, the details. I think that it's really good when you when you're sharing the field like with somebody when, when with somebody is uh, like a coach because you're feeling the same sensations so it's you you're feeling really close so for me it's interesting a uh, good challenge yeah awesome. um now yes hello kumpa 
That's Hi, how, how are it you? Was. <laughs> Here in in, Ar in Argentina, um, I wanted to know you are talking a lot about the Argentinian players and also Latin because they are not only Argentinians. But um, how important is that to you uh, when you got to Old Glory and also the importance of those players being in key positions during the game? Yeah, 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 exactly. For me, it's really important the artists in the team, uh, especially the forwards, because I'm playing front row. So playing with uh, even the Argis so or Uruguayan like Facu Gatas is really important as well. I know them, um, uh, Lautaro as well in the line out. So we have like the same culture, the same organization as well. Tito is one of my friends. Uh, so that's a good connection. And uh, it's really important because I've been in a lot of teams with a lot of foreigns like here and uh, cosmopolitan, yeah, a lot of, lot of foreigns, whatever in the world. And you have to sharing something to go for the same objective, you know? So, uh, yeah, for me, it's uh, one of the most important things because I signed here for that. Well, I will finish off here, uh, Ramiro, with something, a very, very, hopefully a treasured me memory for you, yet a terrible nightmare for me. It uh, was the 2015 World Cup uh, when you were in <laughs> Cardiff and de you destroyed Ireland in the uh, quarterfinals, <laughs> 43 to 20 on that particular day. But th that just goes to prove like so many of the high level games that you have played in um, all throughout your career. That's just one of many, many games, of course. Um, but how can these experiences at those high levels, um, what uh, can you bring to Old Glory having been through all those wars? Yeah, I think the yeah international level is the highest level in the world. Uh, and especially in a World Cup, like you say, in the World Cup quarterfinal, the pressure is whatever. It's a big, big pressure. But we were talking about that uh, with, the, with the guys here, uh, about the pressure. I think uh, that's the difference for the professional, for professional rugby. The pressure, the pressure is going is to be always there, always. So that uh, we're going to decide if, we're going to play with pressure or the pressure is going to be your enemy or your friend. So for me, the big difference is the pressure against New York. We play with big pressure in defense. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't have a really good game, but we know what we have to fix it. That's really important. Um, we know that uh, we're going to work about that. I think what can I bring here? Experience, experience, um, experience in the scrum, ex experience in the drive. Uh, that's the rugby union, you know? That's the rugby union. Details, maybe it's not the best uh, details to to watch like a supporter, you know? <laughs> but it's the rugby and you're going to win. You're going to, sometimes you can win for that. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, well, what I will say, Ramiro, is that I know maybe supporters may not uh, have as much fun like paying attention to those details, but hearing the things that you said, talking about culture, talking about establishing that experience here, I think that's something that um, Old Glory DC is really looking to implement. I know supporters have been earning for that for people and, and character players like you to come in and really provide that. So I think that's super exciting stuff uh, for, for us to hear and obviously for all Old Glory DC fans to hear as well. But uh, Ramiro, can't thank you enough for uh, taking the time to speak with us. I think a lot of insight there i know we have a lot of uh forward-esque guys on uh on, on our on our show here as as hosts and they're always uh um happy to talk with a front rower that gets into the trenches so ramiro <laughs> th thank you so much for uh taking the time and and good luck the rest of the season thank you very much for the invitation i hope to see you soon Absolutely. bye, -bye.
Thank you, Ramiro. And that was uh, our Rent Ditmar brilliant home interview. Again, that was front rower uh, Ramiro Herrera, uh, one of the newest members of the team. And of course, like I just said, uh, really, really cool to kind of hear the insight that he provides uh, for us and also the experience that he's going to bring to this old glory DC team. Again, that's the Rent Ditmar Brain home interview sponsored by the Ditmar company. Uh, they let us be part of your next home search journey. Visit us at rentditmar.com because where you live matters. All right, coming up on the Road to Glory podcast, Podcast. We are going to preview this big time matchup that uh, Old Glory is going to have against New England Free Jacks. What we hope is going to be a bounce back matchup coming up here. We're going to go a little bit deep into it and talk about what uh, Old Glory DC really needs to do heading into this weekend to get back in the win column. Before we get there, got to say, Old Glory DC is excited to welcome back our friends at the Supply Room, your business to business office supply vendor located in the Mid Atlantic. Visit thesupplyroom.com to learn how to create a smarter office. The Road to Glory Podcast. We'll be right back. It takes leadership. It takes determination. It takes grit. On the pitch and off. At ECS, we're tackling our nation's biggest challenges. From cybersecurity and artificial intelligence to digital transformation and IT operations, we build powerful solutions for a complex world. Meet the challenge. Make a difference. At MedStar Health, we're doing everything we can to prepare for what if. Like, what if you need care right now? We have the region's largest network of urgent care centers. Or what if you think you're out of options? Patients continue to turn to us after losing hope elsewhere. Or what if you can't get to care? Our mobile care units bring care to our communities because treating people means being prepared to treat them when what if happens. MedStar Health, it's how we treat people. Shift into Easy Drive at Sheehy and discover an easier way to find your next vehicle. Sheehy Easy Drive works harder to get you a better value when you sell or trade in, find you more options within your area, and offers you one easy price. Buy in store or online so you can focus more on where you need to go, not how you'll get there. For an easy answer to your car needs, shift into Easy Drive at Sheehy. It's easy at Sheehy. Pro Rugby in the nation's capital is here. Are you on board the road to glory? Back to upping the flags with your hosts, Ryan Yee, Gavin Hickey, Trinidad Bavio, Roland Pratt, and Farrah Douglas. Welcome back to the Road to Glory podcast. Ryan Yee, Gavin Hickey, Roland Pratt, Farrah Douglas, and Trinidad Bavio here with you as always. Just wrapped up a pretty... Pretty fun conversation there with Ramiro Herrera breaking down his experiences with Old Glory DC so far, his rugby journey, and just all all of that rugby knowledge that he'll be bringing into the locker room for this Old Glory DC side. Uh, really, really interesting stuff. Um, but now it's all about looking forward. We've we've done the hard stuff. We've broken down what was that tough matchup this past weekend against the New York Ironworkers. Lots of learning experiences there. I think this team has a, has a lot to learn from moving forward here, and hopefully they're going to take that here into this next big-time matchup against the New England Free Jacks. We mentioned it. This stretch is not an easy one away two weeks in a row against two of the best sides that you'd argue heading into the season. Uh, we're probably up there in the top of those rankings, and they've definitely proven that here at the start of the season as well. So let's start talking about it, about how this Old Glory DC team is going to get back in the win column against what is a pretty tough New England Free Jacks side. Um, should be interesting, and, and obviously there's a lot of things that they need to do to, to right the ship here, guys. Yep, you're dead right with that, Ryan. Uh, I think week two by looks like it might have hurt us a little bit. 
uh, but it's time to start building momentum. And we didn't see it work in, in all glory's favor last week with, with scrummaging, but you know, for me, that's going to be probably be a go-to week in, week out. I'm sure Fire probably agree. That's such an area of strength for all glory that you'd look for them to start building away into the game against New England through their scrummaging, through their set piece. Um, off to Quinton Newcomer going back to New England for the first time. I'd like to see him come on and, and have a point to prove uh, and make sure that that second half front row is, is just as solid as, as the first half. And um, I think that'd be a key area for Old Glory to take on. Free Jacks would be up front this week. Agreed. It's the front row again. Let's see. Let let uh, let those front row boys of Ascaro and Herrera go to work there. Um, I would kind of like to see Gattas maybe get a start as well. Um, I'm not sure what you folks think. Um, I think he might be due. I think, um, again, just his scrummaging, I, I believe, is fantastic. Uh, we'll see how the how the lineouts go with him. It's always just a little bit of a question mark, I feel. on a, he, a, he may just need to prove himself a little bit there more. Uh, but um, around the field, I think that he puts in a massive uh, uh, work rate and it might be really good in the loose there um, on uh, on the weekend. So that's something that I'm looking to see. Uh, I didn't uh, hear what happened to to stand south um, over during the week. Uh, but I think that if we can get him back, it would be huge for the line out. I know Latoro has been doing great there, but having Stan kind of as the line out captain really helps settle things down just a little bit there. Get Tito to stick that ball in the corner and give New England a little bit of the medicine that we received from New York this weekend, folks. Yeah, Rolly, just on that, I think with Faku at hooker, with uh, Herrera, obviously, and Jack Iscaro at loose head, I think that's probably our, our strongest, most formidable scrummaging front row. And I think I think Faku gets a little bit of slack for his throwing. I mean, from what I've seen, his, his throwing is, is on the money. I don't think we've always had the line at leaders in the line out when he's been mm-hmm. throwing for the few times he's had that opportunity, to be honest. I think that's taken away from a little bit. But, you know, for me, Faku is a pretty special special player. I'd like to see him get a, get a shout as well. Yeah, but yeah, nice I see him get the opportunity. Some of those line outs in the second half was the jumpers mishandling the little bobbling of the ball as it hits the fingers um not clean delivery down to the nine that's still you know still counts towards a line out but you know it's like who gets in trouble hooker always gets in trouble fire you know that (laughs) the the hooker because they're the most you know they throw it in so if you don't win the line out the finger gets pointed there so i think he does sometimes get the short end of the stick around that but I would agree with Gavin he's pretty solid in the in that front row I wrote something down that Ramiro said that is we know that we didn't do some things good but we know what we have to fix and I think that's pretty important and I think that it's good we were talking the past episodes you started with Chicago that is a totally different team than New York they are in different realities you had that by week. So now it's okay. We had a good start, but we didn't have a good game with New York. We, we know what we have in front of us and that we are not the best team, but you know that you can improve. And when you have the T days, the handling errors, you said the set pieces, um, the discipline, the discipline maybe is the easiest thing that you can improve from one game to another. Um, but 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 I think it's going to be a good thing that you had those two two games and you know what you have to improve so that you can get another win. I Trini, I am one hundred percent with you on discipline. Discipline cleans up all of the execution errors, the mishandling of the ball, that one extra pass that we don't need. You can play fast and still not have to make two extra passes. Um, mm. I think also it cleans up penalties, individual penalties, team penalties. You, know, you do, you want to test a referee who doesn't, it sets the edge you can play at, but you have to be smart enough to recognize when the referee has told you what the edge is and you got to back yeah. off, push a little back off, push a little. <laughs> and we did not do a good job of backing off as a team, but we definitely had some individuals on field who did not make smart decisions around what was being articulated from the referee on our penalty count. 
I think it's going to be it's going to be a fascinating matchup. I mean, there's 18 points, like goal difference between the two teams in favor of New York. We're both on five points. Um, I think, uh, sorry, not New York, uh, the Free Jacks. Free Jacks had a bye this past weekend too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, they've just had a break. So they're, uh, what are they? They're two and one. Yep. Um, sorry, one and one. One and one. One, one. one and one, as, as we are as well. Oh, glory. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how they react to being on a bye for, for a week with the team who's just, had a game, um, you know, and a team who were are neck and neck in the table. Uh, I think after this week, maybe we'll see a little more of that separation. And hopefully, Old Glory is on the upper side of it. And, and and talking about the Free Jacks, like what I know, this is a different team than what we saw last year because obviously they don't have, no longer have Bodine Walker. But it seems like at least at the start of the year that they have somewhat been able to not necessarily replace, but they still look like a pretty strong side. So when you look at this New England Free Jacks side off the start of these first two matches that they've played, what has really popped to you? And what is what is Old Glory DC going to have to do in terms of negating that and, and really shutting them down? New York is going to rush on defense. So we have to clean up our ability to hold on to the ball. We had a lot of kind of going in. We're a little bit high when we draw, when our forwards are kind of do, pounding in to try to penetrate in that midfield, I think they've got to get lower and they got to hold on to that ball tighter um, ball presentation. Um, we definitely got exposed going to the ground where um, we got hunters in getting hands on the ball, getting called for not releasing. So I think we just, we have to clean it up because we know that the defense is going to come at us and come at us hard. And on, on the flip side of that, I think we've got to be very careful our kicking game. It's got to be accurate because mm -hmm. we don't want Mitch, Mitch Wilson catching the no. ball, ca launching counterattack counter after counterattack. Exactly. So I think our kicking game's got to be really on point on, on, on Saturday. Yeah, I think we can go back here to sort of MLR 101 as well. If the, if the conditions are right, our, our team, I feel, is very competitive on a normal day-to-day because we have Tito, because we have a functioning line out, uh, because we can put a driving mall together, because we have a very good scrum, we have platform folks. So um, we can play the ABCs of rugby. We can take a penalty, kick it into the corner and maul it over if, if necessary. Um, I, that hasn't been fully proven yet, but I do fully see it within the squad that we could do this time and again feel like having that ability is always going to give you a chance within every match. Uh, we haven't quite um, gotten that full 80 minutes of continuity just yet, but I feel like uh, this weekend, again, we're going to take another step forward and I'll see, I'd like to see us controlling larger segments of the game for 10, 15, 20 minutes of fear and utter control. I want to see us sort of strangle a team a little bit. And I, I think that'll be the next step. Um, I'm not sure if we'll do it this week against New England, but if we can, it bodes very, very well for us. And again, it's it's going to be a tough matchup against the New England Free Jacks. We talked about it, how this little stretch is is going to be one that definitely tests the uh, the fortitude of this Old Glory DC side, and they have a chance to prove it. They have a chance to prove it this weekend after what was a, a not so uh, much of a great showing against the New York Ironworkers, but I'm sure, uh, like we heard from Ramiro, they're definitely up for the test. They're not going to back down from this fight this weekend. Um, but uh, hey, we're not going to back down either, because this is where we put our money where our mouth is. Coming up after this break, we're going to be giving our prediction site, and we mentioned it. Our newest host, Trinidad Bavio, we're cleaning it up here. I shouldn't say cleaning it up. <laughs> Up, but at least doing very, very well. And obviously the Old Glory DC uh, uh, New England Free Jacks matchup is going to be in this prediction segment along with two others. So we'll see whether or not what we're saying here is really what we feel here. And it'll be proven after this break here. And I'll be coming up in just a moment's time. But first, with dozens of TVs and speakers at each table, Glory Days Grill is the best place to watch your favorite rugby team. Wings, burgers, fresh salmon, delicious salads, sandwiches, and even cartoons for the kids. Locations all over the DMV. Find us at Old Glory. Find us at glorydaysgrill.com. The Road to Glory podcast. We'll be right back. Are you looking for an exciting and unforgettable live sporting event? Look no further than Old Glory DC, your hometown Major League Rugby franchise. Don't miss out on this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see professional rugby up close. With a mix of strength, skill, and strategy, rugby is a sport like no other. Whether you're coming alone, with friends, or looking for unique family entertainment, Old Glory DC has something for everyone. Be a part of this unique experience. Get your tickets now at oldglorydc.com. That's oldglorydc.com. Knowledge. It's where innovation begins. It's what leads us to discovery. 
and motivates us to succeed. It's why we ask the tough questions and what leads us to the answers. At Lidos, we're standing behind those working to improve the world's health, safety, and efficiency. Lidos. Pro Rugby in the nation's capital is here. Are you on board the road to glory? Back to upping the flags with your hosts, Ryan Yee, Gavin Hickey, Trinidad Bavio, Roland Pratt, and Farrah Douglas. Welcome back into the Road to Glory podcast. Farrah Douglas, Gavin Hickey, Roland Pratt, Trinidad Bavio, and Ryan Yee. And this is the uh, favorite part, maybe not our favorite part of the show, but definitely our fans are definitely in tune with it. It's been a, a tough couple of weeks here for uh, for us hosts here trying to predict these games. I think it just shows you the the excitement that has happened in the in some of the parody and, and hard hard to predict nature of the MLR here after uh, three weeks of play. But we have a, another week here to bounce back. Um, for all of our listeners that have been following along, uh, slowly starting to catch up and i'll say it um fair douglas roland pratt you guys are still in the lead but not by much anymore you guys seem like you're pulling away with things there but you guys are now at five and four after what was a tough round three for you guys going oh and three with that coming up next myself four and five not so great but gavin better than you man three and six for you but i will say trinidad uh you did enter the competition a little late here but from a winning percentage you're i think at the highest here with two and one last week with some pretty gutsy picks in round three so we'll see whether or not you uh you uh stay with that bravery here in this round four prediction prediction segment uh we did talk uh, at the tail end of last episode gav that uh maybe we had included the navy western matchup in that prediction but after that showing i don't know if i'm as confident as as doing that going forward so i think, uh, I, think I'll, I'll, I think i'll forget about that one i think i'll just stick to um to college uh, college <laughs> rugby. how about that no kidding no kidding all right let's break it down here so three matches that we're going off with this week um some pretty good ones here um houston seattle i think is a big one obviously the two rem- uh, two remaining undefeated teams here three and oh Obviously, one of those teams are uh, going to be walking away 4-0. and um, That will be interesting as well. I think Chicago and Toronto are next matchup that will predict. Two teams that seem to be struggling a little bit now. Who's going to be able to turn around uh, their ship there and start getting into the right track? And then, obviously, we'll, we'll predict the New England Free Jacks and Old Glory DC matchup as well. But we'll start off. Let's start off with that uh, that that matchup of the week, it seems like, with Houston and Seattle. And I got to still go. You guys are still in the lead. So, Roly, I'll throw it to you first here. Who do you got, Houston or Seattle? Very impressed with Houston at the weekend. I have to say, they're at home. Uh, I'm going to just just simply because they're at home and they did so well against San Diego. I'll take them again here. I've, I've been waxing lyrical about Seattle's defense here all season. Uh, they'll get a damn good test down in, uh, in Houston at the weekend. Uh, I think Houston will just shade this game. Roly, that's away. That's in Seattle, that game. Okay, so what's written down wrong here? Well, I think that changes what you're going to predict. It does. It does. It does hugely, yeah. <laughs> mm. Yes, that, that, is, that, is, that is in Seattle. It is in Seattle. Ryan, you tried to. Oh my God! I just put I, it I shouldn't down. have said anything. <laughs> you shouldn't have. It was my have. chance. That was my it, was, chance. it was your chance oh. to get back. That's my oh fault. My in the rundown, it's a little bit backwards there. But yes, that is in Seattle. So is that that changed okay. everything for you? It does actually change okay. it. I'm taking Seattle. Yeah, it changes it completely. I will say now that I realize, like it seems like. It, and it goes to your point, Gav, about how this home field advantage has really been taking a play here for the start of the season. Seattle has been has been cruising there, being at home and being able to stay at that uh, that uh, the the Seattle field there um, in Starfire Sports Complex. So it should be interesting how that pivots. But yeah, that is home. So Roly, you're going with uh, Seattle there. Uh, Fair. Got a you're... good fan base there, though. You know, it's a good good stadium. Yeah. Good, good raucous crowd. Makes sense. Absolutely. Place to play. All right, Fair. You're up next. You're second, or at least tied for first here. Who are you going with, Houston or Seattle? Houston. Going with Houston. Short and sweet. Oh, splitting. Splitting there. All right. I guess I'm going next here because I seem to be third here. Trini, I'll I'll let you go next here. Um, (laughs) I think I'm going to go uh, the Houston Sabercats as well. They've been really impressed with me. I was very high uh, high of them heading into the season. I think they're very explosive too. And I think if there's anything that is going to beat the Seattle team, it's going to be a game style like that. So I'll side with Houston here against Seattle. Uh, Trini, what about you? When you have the top two teams at the moment, playing at home is super important with your people. So I'm going to go with Seattle. Seattle for Trini. And then Gav, last but not least for you. Thanks. (laughs) Um, 
<laughs> yeah, you're spot on with that, Trini. Um, Houston are, are leading by two points, but I'm going to go with Rowley. The fact that it's in Seattle, a real tough place to go and play. Uh, they're a very tough team to beat at home. I think Seattle, not that I know a whole lot, obviously, but I think <laughs> Seattle are going to go win this one. All right, so Rowley, uh, Gavin, and Trini going with Seattle. Fair and myself going with Houston. Split there. We haven't had much of that the past few weeks, so it's nice to see that. Mm. Um, let's head on to this next matchup here, Chicago and Toronto in Chicago. This one's this one's written correctly there, <laughs> Rowley. Um, I'll, I'll start okay, with you again. You. Yeah, I'll start with you for this one. Who's going to be the team here that's going to be turning around and getting their first uh, win of the season? Uh, I'll keep it simple and short. Here, I don't think Toronto can uh, execute a line out properly yet. Um, so I'm taking Chicago. Uh, uh, home game, I, they'll definitely want to uh, get that victory uh, because they didn't get it at the weekend. And I think that they might be a better team than Toronto. So there you go. All right, Farah. Chicago. Farah's going Chicago. Yeah, you're very deadlocked on your on your picks here. Just you're 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 gunning for them. That's a, you're you're confident in them. You're saying them. You're going with them. I love it. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna go with Chicago as well. Um, Toronto's dealing with a whole bunch of stuff, including a whole bunch of injuries. And yeah, I agree with you, Rogue. They uh, just not look good in their lineout as well. And I think that'll be key uh, too. And and I think uh, Chicago will be looking to get that W, their first franchise W at home as well. Uh, Trini, what about you? I gotta go with Chicago also. Um, I think that that it's a better team and. And can definitely beat Toronto Arrows in Chicago. That's very important also. All right, and Gav. Ryan, who did you back? Chicago. Where are you from? You don't no. don't be calling me on I was just gonna say I was just gonna say something that yeah, it does pain me to go against the lone Canadian side. Um, Wait till but, next week. Yeah, well, yeah, that, that would be even even better. A little bit of a tease ahead for that. So yes, tough to go against that. Um, but hey, I, I I speak the truth here, and I'll go with my gut. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, I don't think Chicago is good as they were made out to be. I think it's gonna take them a long time. I think they're an Above average side, I think Toronto are poor. So I think Chicago going to win this one. All right. So clean, clean sweep there. All of us going with Chicago. Oh, I, I don't blame that at all. Um, again, I think this Toronto Aero side, as, as, as much as Gav here has called me out on it, they are, they are struggling a little bit here. So, um, yeah, let's shift on to this last one. Obviously, the prediction one that everyone's waiting for. Old Glory DC taking on the New England Free Jacks in what should be a bounce back matchup for Old Glory DC. Rolly, who are you going with? This is a really difficult one it for me. It is a tough one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, this might be, I think this is like the second time ever. Uh, I'm actually going to go with New England in this one. Okay. And But I'm going to, with a little caveat, I do think we're going to get a bonus point out of it. Um, I just, I feel like we're getting better. This might be just a bridge too far too soon. Uh, but I think by the time that our season continues on, we get six, eight, ten games in here we're going to be right up there with New England, but I think they're just their extra bit of continuity from last season may just help them over the line here. Absolutely. Farah, what about you? This too is tough being that I'm an old glory fan, <laughs> but also I am from New England, but I think uh, Rolly is right. Um, I think this stage in the game where we are as a team, I think, New England probably has the edge. When we come back to this, it'll be a different story. So I'm going to go with New England. All right. Um, Could you just repeat the Rolly is right, but so I can record it, please? Just, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, well, it seems, uh, you, you guys must be sharing notes or something. You both are at five and four. I don't, I don't know if that's a coincidence or not. But uh, <laughs> Trini, what about you? Who you got here, New England or Old Glory DC? I will go with Old Glory. Yeah, I think that is one of those important matches in the tournament. When you have a win, you have, you've lost another match, but now that you've seen that you can do, um, you can play regular and you can win. Uh, no, I, I, I'm going with Oak Glory. Yeah, I know it's going to be tough. You've already said that. <laughs> All right, Gav, who you got? <laughs> well, because I'm desperate for points, um, because I have to see things that, that um, Farah and, and Rowley aren't doing. Uh, no, I think, I think if you look at it, home field advantage for New England. They are a gritty team. They're pretty familiar with each other for the most part. They're a very good side. I think they should win uh, New England. Do I think they'll win? No. I think that week off last week is going to stand 
against them like it did for us going into uh, our game. I think we're a little more battle-hardened now. Um, I think it'll be a, a huge result if we win it, but I am going to back Old Glory to pull off a bit of a shock on this one and then build from there going into the future. Yeah, and for, I would for, love to be wrong. go on the record that if I'm wrong for this game... <laughs> no, you're all done. You're all done. I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that you're all done. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm totally okay with being wrong about the old glory. You guy, do you guys know what an emotional hedge is? An emotional <laughs> That's me hedge. right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Boy, I'll say for all the points that uh that Gav mentioned and all the points that Trini mentioned, I also want our uh, our old glory DC fan base to to like me a little bit here. So I'm going to keep going old glory DC till I die here. So old glory DC, yeah. I'll uh, I'll pick them on this one. Um you know, it's, it's always something uh, and as also as the producer, it makes for uh, for better content as well coming away from <laughs> So it was a tough one here talking breaking down that match in this one, but old glory DC I'll go. So should be interesting. Definitely some different picks here. We split on uh, on at least two of the matches outside the Chicago and Toronto one. Um, so we should definitely see a little bit of a shakeup, maybe, of the rankings here heading into next week. Um, again, that matchup against the New England Free Jacks in New England. Kickoff time is on uh, Saturday, 3 o'clock Eastern. Uh, that will be broadcasted, of course, on Masson and the Rugby Network as well. Also want to give a little shout-out as well. Also, in uh, if you want a little rugby tune-up ahead of of uh, that Old Glory DC side. Uh, Navy is taking on Cal in what is a very, very big collegiate matchup. Uh, quite familiar with Cal. Um, I had a, had a friend who, uh, or my brother as well, who played for UBC and they used to do the home at homes uh, with Cal and, and they've always put out a formidable side and obviously now seeing what Navy can do against my alma mater, it should be a very exciting matchup. That will actually also be broadcasted on the Rugby Network too. That's 1230 Eastern time on Saturday. They're playing at home, the great sports complex in Annapolis. Um, Gav, you got anything Thing to say about that matchup um first time ever cal will be playing navy in annapolis so we're very excited to host them cal are the preeminent varsity d1 program uh, we're all playing catch up with but uh you know we'll just keep our heads down and, and see what happens on saturday we're excited yeah, we'll see how much that tune-up match really helped out. But uh, yeah, if you aren't already then, uh, make sure you're giving us a follow, Old Glory DC, um, on all the different social media channels. And again, we've had a super fun time uh, doing this podcast over the course of, I guess, what is a month now, guys, which is pretty incredible to say. Hasn't felt like it, that's for sure. It's absolutely flying by. Um, I've had a lot of time breaking down this uh, Old Glory DC side. So if you're enjoying that content, make sure you're liking, subscribing, giving us a follow. Had a lot of fun uh, doing that at all. So um, yeah, should be an interesting matchup against this New England Free Jacks again. The Rugby Network, Masson, uh, 3 o'clock Eastern on Saturday. And then we'll also see you all next week and hopefully what will be an Old Glory DC victory that we'll be breaking down. For Farrah Douglas, for Trinidad Bavio, for Roland Pratt, for Gavin Hickey, I'm Ryan Yee, and we'll see you next week. You've been listening to the Road to Glory podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything Old Glory DC and beyond. From expert team analysis to exclusive interviews and more, you'll always find it right here. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, find us on social media at Old Glory DC. Catch you next time on the Road to Glory podcast.